Hi. Hi, my name's Adam. I've been using the Kitty Terminal for five years or so now, and I've only just recently started trying to actually configure it to make it look nicer and work a little bit better. So I'm going to show you how I do that. I'm going to start from scratch with zero Kitty Terminal configuration and show you step by step how I get it configured to make it look nicer and work a bit better. So first things first, the font size is tiny, so I'm going to hit Control Shift Plus to zoom in a whole heap. That way, everyone watching can actually read what I'm doing. Uh, you'll notice that I have a kind of fancy looking prompt. If I go to a Git repo, it shows you know, shows what the prompt is and uh, the Git status is. So uh, that's actually got nothing at all to do with Kitty. So all this kind of syntax highlight, the highlighting of colors and changing and showing the Git status, got nothing to do with Kitty. That's all from Z shell and the theme power level 10K. So pay no attention to the prompt. Nothing to do with Kitty. Uh, we can stop configuring Kitty. If you just go up to the menu, go Kitty, go Settings. It will create a brand new config file, and it'll put every configuration item that Kitty has in there, set to its default value, all commented out, and all putting in uh, comments below each one to explain what it's doing. So first things first, it's a bit too big, actually. That's better. First things first, I'm going to change the font. Uh, I like Fira code which gives you programming ligatures. So let's put that in a Fira code. And then node fonts, if you don't know, the node fonts are sometimes used by terminal editors or you know, CLIs to get fancier characters in there to make your terminal look a bit nicer. So let's uh, reload this now. You can reload your configuration pressing control, command, comma on Mac OS. And now it's using font. But now the font size is way too small, so I'm going to change the font size as well to make it a nice 20 for the purposes of recording the video. Hopefully that can be read pretty easily. Oh, let's make it 24, just to make sure the video is, re is uh, really easy to read. Uh, I like ligatures because you can then get nice symbols, like in a lot of function signatures, I use the arrow. So with a ligature, it actually makes it into a nice Unicode arrow but you can still move over each half as though it was just a hyphen and a little dash, a uh, little HTML tag thing, because that's all it is. Uh, you can get you know, a bunch of nice symbols in there. So I like ligatures, not everyone does, that's okay. Um, yeah, so the other thing I like to use in Kitty, I really like that Kitty has a built-in terminal multiplexer. So kind of like Tmux or Zellige, you can just hit Control, Shift, Enter, and you can get extra windows in your terminal. That's kind of cool. Kitty calls these windows. Uh, I kind of refer to them as splits, but whatever. So when you hit Control Shift Enter, you open them. You can hit Control D to close them or just type exit. So I really like them, but they look kind of ugly by default, in my opinion. So uh, first things first, but you can also hit Control Shift L to change how they're laid out. So first things first, I'm going to use uh, put a margin between them. So if you put the margin to 10, Reload. There we go. Now each window has a little bit of space between it, which I think makes it look nicer. Uh, the other thing I like to do, you'll notice that if I exit this window, I've still got a bit of a margin around my prompt. So you can see there's like a bit of gap here. So I like to set a single window margin length to zero. And now, if I, I can see the prompt actually goes right to the edge. There's none of that annoying border. So next thing I'd like to do, it still kind of looks a bit, eh, look, a bit boring to me. So let's set a background image. Uh, this is a nice image that I've just downloaded from somewhere earlier. Yeah. This actually is only the very corner of the image, so I'm going to change this to be scaled instead of tiled. And now it'll try to resize it to fit the terminal properly. OK, that's looking better. Uh, and you know, as this comment calls out, it must be a PNG image. So uh, that's looking a lot better. The only thing is now the border is kind of green, and that kind of clashes a bit with the desert scene. So I'm going to change the active border color to a kind of cyan. That looks nicer. And now I'm going to change the, uh, the borders themselves to make them a bit thicker. So we can just go to um, 
what's that configuration called? Window, border, width, starts out at half a point. I'm gonna make it just, uh, make a one point. Make it a little thicker. Maybe even two points. Yeah, I think that looks kind of nice. Okay, um, now the only thing is with this background image, it's kind of distracting. It's a bit too high contrast. So what you can do, we can put in, it also makes it hard to read you know, green text or something. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply a background tint. So with background tint of say 90%, you can see it makes it much darker. Maybe it's a bit too dark, maybe 80% instead. Um, but you can really make it look nice by putting tinting the gaps between windows differently. So there, now we go. Uh, now we can have, you can actually see the background image between them. If we change the margin width from being 10 to being, I don't know, 50, you can see much, much, much more of the image. Uh, this would kind of work nicely if I had a smaller font size, I don't know maybe 20. Yeah, it looks kind of nice, but yeah, for my daily daily driving, I tend to have it smaller. But okay, let's get the, uh, I think that's all I wanted to do for making the windowing look nice. Oh, the other thing is that by default, uh, you can change which uh, configuration of or which layout for all these windows you have. You just go to enable layouts. You can choose to enable or disable some of the layouts. You can find all the layouts in the Kitty configuration page. I tend to prefer using the tall layout with my default. So I'm going to put that first, and then we'll have all the other ones. So now if we reload, it'll by default, when I hit Control Shift on here, open a new window, it'll go to my preferred layout. <sighs> okay, cool. Now let's get the next part set up. So Kitty, in addition to having these windows that you can split across one screen, you can also open up tabs. So you can switch back and forth between tabs and each tab can have several windows open. Uh, I think the tab bar by default looks kind of ugly, but it's also very easy to change that. So we're gonna go tab bar style, gonna change it from fade to be a uh, power line. And yeah, now the tabs look much nicer, I think. And you can also change the power line separator. Uh, from, I, I don't really love this angled look. I think the uh, slanted looks nicer. So you can see when I reload it now, I think that just looks a bit cleaner and nicer. Um, there's a couple of missed options, but the only one I really find important is this one. So by default, if you hold Alt on macOS, it tries to give you a little like Unicode picker. Uh, I really like that because uh, my Helix editor uses Alt for a lot of stuff. So this makes uh, yeah, this makes uh, programs like Helix and some weird NeoVim configs work better. Uh, let's see, what else do I want to do? Oh yeah, bindings. This is basically how I like my Kitty Terminal to look. So I'm going to talk real quickly about some functionality stuff. You can go to the end of it and define some new new bindings. So, yeah, this is showing you some examples of how they work. I like to bind the F keys. So we're gonna map F1 to the new window with uh, with current working directory. So if I close this, I'm gonna cd into my config kitty subdirectory. Now, if I hit uh, command, control, shift. Oh, sorry, if I hit F1, I have to reload the configuration. And now if I hit F1, I can open the tab in the same thing, in the same working directory as the previous tab, previous split was. And I'm going to also map F2 to be opening my Helix editor in this place. So again, I'll reload. And now if I hit F2, it opens a new tab, new split with the Helix editor open in the same CD, the same directory. Cool. Okay. So um, it's going to close everything and show you and open it. 
cool. So uh, what I'd like to do now is, oh yeah, you can also use uh, themes. There's this little thing built in called kitten themes. So you can then change which visuals you have. You can go, I like to use dark mode. So you can choose one here and then it gives you a couple of different options for how to start using it. But you can see that actually it changes the tint as well. So it's changing what color the background gets tinted in. Uh, and if you're using background images, then make sure your terminal editors, you know, make sure your, your Vim or Emacs or Helix, whatever you use, make sure it's not gonna set its own background. Otherwise it'll draw over the nice background image you've made. Yeah, so that's basically how I configure Kitty. Uh, I think if you're gonna look at a certain program all day, it should look really nice. So that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, have a good one.